All right, we're back, guys. It's uh, been a little bit, but uh, we decided to take a short break since that last video was so, so long. Yep. <laughs> uh, but this time it's just me and Frontier again. Or Frontier and I. I should speak proper English. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be kind of a unique episode because this is the first time we're running up against something we've talked about on the show already. Uh, so we started this show talking about the Modest War collab. And then the second episode, we actually talked about the Rosalia Noemi patch that when it came out on the Chinese server. Uh, back then, I was talking with S2 about it. This time, I'll be talking with Frontier about it. For the most part, I'm going to try to keep this short and not just try to repeat myself from that video too much. Okay. So, Frontier, uh, do you know anything about this patch just before we go in? Uh, zero. No idea. I completely forgot these people existed. <laughs> Okay, so let's just start the way we started that last video, which is, uh, we talked about Fair Arena a little bit. So Fair Arena, uh, just to recap a little bit, it's a Secret Realm event that is going to last one week, and it's just a PvP mode where it's sort of similar to Apex, but you get to pick from a preset box of units that they provide for you. Uh, and these units have preset stats, so everybody will have equal amounts of stats, they'll have equal soldier stats, and all that stuff. That seems interesting. Yeah, so everybody's on a fair level playing field. So just a better tactician. Yeah, so, you know, whoever's a better tactician will win. Uh, generally speaking, you know, there's still RNG. This game has a lot of RNG, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, it has really nice rewards. It has, like, the... Uh, it has the Search Stone packs. It has enhance, oh. uh, Enhancement Stones. It has Enchant Scrolls. It has... I guess crystals. I gotta do it then. I would say the rewards are at least as good as the Auto Chess mode, which... Auto Chess had really nice rewards, so this has nice rewards too, but uh, this had pretty good reception among the Chinese players, because they, they seem to really enjoy this one. Yeah, because now it's, you know, the whales don't... I mean, the, the, the whales are probably going to have more experience, so they'll still be the better player, but, like, newbies or anybody else who's, like, lower tier can, you know, have a chance. Yeah, that's the greatest thing about this mode, is that any, even, like, completely fresh players, they can jump in and have fun with everyone else. So I'll, I'll definitely be doing this, because I, I didn't do Auto Chess that much, because... RNG does not like me. <laughs> yeah, Auto Chess was not a mode that a lot of people liked. Uh, I mean, some people really liked it. it. It had a more mixed reception than most game modes in this game has had, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Fair Arena, it's coming with this patch, and it'll last a week, and uh, uh, we'll see you guys there, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess uh, let's get into Rosalia Noemi. So this new patch uh, increase, uh, introduces two new reincarnation characters who are also Glory Faction. Uh, so this was them trying to power up the Glory Faction a little bit. Uh, the last time we talked about it, we estimated that the global release was in October 1st, but uh, that has actually changed. It moves to a week earlier now. It should be coming out on uh, September 24th now. And that's because uh, there was like a week, like there was like a five week cycle on the Chinese servers that we didn't have on the global server. So if, if they moved it up a week, what is going to replace that one week? Uh, we, we like skipped over a week and like I, I already kind of forgot what it what it is we skipped over but it was like a filler week that the Oof. Chinese server okay. had at one point so fair enough it wasn't like a huge deal so yeah okay so let's just uh, get right into it let's talk about Rosalia so I think uh, like I said last time we talked about her Rosalia's biggest claim to fame is that she has huge huge range so they designed Rosalia as sort of a, a glory counterpart to Leon she has chivalry uh, she has like smash she has thousand hooves, and she has a basically like a javelin sort of attack, and uh, she also has like a second move that is also like chivalry. So that's why she has such huge movement range. So she can move five, she can use chivalry to move another three, and then she can use like this new skill called Sword of Asylum to move hmm. another three blocks. So so that of course gives her a total a total of eleven movement plus two range attack. So she can attack from thirteen spaces away. So she can zoom all the way across the screen and uh, attack someone you have left unguarded if you're not being careful enough. That's interesting as heck. That is one thing we kind of emphasized the last time we talked about her. It's like, oh my god, that, that's crazy range. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, she's a holy class. Functionally, it, it works like a cavalry class. It's five move. It has like cavalry type movement, so it's obstructed by forest and all that. Mm -hmm. But it is a holy class, so you don't have to worry about lancers, you know, stopping your attack. Yeah. Uh, so you just equip her with griffin knights. Or the Holy Pegasus in front of her Holy class, and she will do full damage to most enemies. When you see Rosalia being placed down or being picked, 
you want to be careful with your tank. You don't want to move your tank forward too much as the first move, which is something a lot of people do. Uh, because Rosalia can just zoom in and kill someone if you do that. Hmm. So that's that's the first obvious thing, and we already talked about that last time. The second thing that I think we neglected to mention is just how good her terrain effect Sword of Asylum is. So Rosalia has a terrain effect called Sword of Asylum that is very similar to Lamford's talent. So it places down a very a relatively small terrain space, which is only like uh, two blocks wide, I believe. It, it gives 10% uh, to all stats except for HP, and it also, after you attack, you restore 20% of the damage you dealt as HP. So it gives a bit of Lamford's talent, it also gives a bit of Elven's talent to anybody who is in that uh, terrain. So the reason this terrain is so good is that if you've seen Rosalia being played on the Chinese server, you will see her played alongside Claret or, you know, just other tank busters. Uh, Clara especially works so well with this because just think about it, like if you put down the Sword of Asylum around someone's tank, you just dive in Clara. Clara has plus 10 to all stats. She's gonna recover more HP after she does that first attack. Yeah. She's gonna, she's, yeah, she's gonna break through your tank a lot easier when Rosalia's around. So uh, we did, I think we did undervalue Rosalia's terrain the last time we talked about her. Her terrain is actually really, really scary. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at it like that's quite terrifying. The other thing is that Rosalia's terrain is unique among terrain effects is that in, it, it cannot be overwritten by other terrain effects. So like right now you have like sort of licorices sort of warring with each other to uh, assert dominance. Yeah. Uh, with with Rosalia, if you place down sort of asylum, that's a safe spot for you. Like it cannot be overwritten by anything except for another sort of asylum. So she, her, her terrain gets priority over other terrains and that's probably <laughs> because her terrain is much smaller. Yeah. But yeah, it does make her interesting as an option if you want to try to like uh, curtail the huge terrain meta that we're entering into because you're because soon we're going to get uh, old Landius as well or Boomer Lando, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Uh, he also has huge terrain uh, covering carpets, <laughs> and mm. uh, yeah, Rosalia is your only way to make sure you have a really a, a safe terrain space just for yourself. Would she replace Leon? Okay, so, so I talked about this a little bit last time, so this is kind of complicated because, like, Leon in PvP serves a very, very different role compared to Rosalia. Like, on this, even though, like, Zillon said, okay, Rosalia is going to be, like, the glory counterpart to Leon, she actually plays very differently. So even though both of them can, like, sure, you can you can dive both of them in and try to one-shot a tank if you think you have stacked enough stats, uh, I think Leon is better at doing that. Uh, from the outset because Leon has better attack, he has more damage at the start of a fight because Rosalia is a character that needs to get stacks on herself to get more stats. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so at, at near the beginning of a battle, like Rosalia is weaker than Leon, but once she gets her stacks, she gets her terrain down, she's probably just as strong if not stronger than Leon. But that is worth something worth noting that if you're just looking for like a turn one tank smash, like you want Leon over Rosalia probably. Uh, the other thing is that Leon, of course, his 3-cost skill is very disruptive. Yo, yeah. Yeah, Rosalia does not have that. Rosalia doesn't have anything similar to that. So, you know, that's that's the difference between them in PvP. Hmm. Uh, in PvE, I talked about this last time, Leon is so, so much better as a PvE investment compared to Rosalia. And, and the reason for that is their factions. Uh, Rosalia's factions are Glory, uh, Reincarnation, or Tensei, and Princess. So... The Princess faction is in Leviar for Eternal Temple, and Glory faction is in Scylla for Eternal Temple. Yeah. Uh, for both of those, Rosalia is going to have a lot of trouble. Leviar is someone you want to use range damage for. Yeah. And for Scylla, the map is on water, and Rosalia is just going to get her feet caught all the time. Yeah. And Reincarnation is not in any of the Eternal Temples yet, unfortunately. And mm. I, I believe it's still not in any of the Eternal Temples on Chinese server as well, so that kind of sucks for them. For uh, Ancient Beckoning, Princess faction is in Nidhogg. And she's okay there, like she's she's decent there, uh, but like Glory is for Hugin and Moonin, and she is like not very useful there at all. I mean, she yeah. can put down her terrain and try to power up your norm, but yeah, aside from that, she's probably not doing very much. Okay, just making sure because she looked definitely interesting to me. I play Leon every time. Like so, for basically for like generic PVE, she's just as good, if not better, than Leon. You know, like just like you know, your challenge fights. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I want I want to push through dragons. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, she's she's good. But like, if you're like a newer player to the game and you're thinking, okay, I want a I want a strong cavalry unit for my as a new player. It's like I I I just can't find myself recommending her over Leon for so many reasons. Because aside from what I just mentioned, uh, there's the fact that oh, like you know, Leon, uh, Empire and strategy, uh, that works so much better in PVE. 
Empire is Valkyrie, so Leon really, really good in Valkyrie. Strategy is uh, the Phoenix fight for Internal Temple. Uh, Leon, very good in Phoenix. Empire and Strategy are both uh, Slepnir, and Leon is so important in Slepnir. Like, she, he's really, really good for Slepnir, so like... If you don't, if you train Rosalia over Leon, like when you get around to doing ancient backtracking, you're gonna miss out on a lot by not having Leon. Mm, okay. And the final thing is that Leon's bonds are much, much easier to get. Like Leon has a has like an R character as one of his bond characters, Layard and Bernhardt. Yeah. Where's Leon and Bernhardt? Yeah. And uh, Rosalia's bonds are Maya and Ares, which are two SSR units that many like. Okay, like even if you're a new player, maybe you'll get Ares at some point, but like. There's not a lot of banners for Ares coming up. Yeah. Didn't we just have a... Oh, no, we have a Maya banner currently, don't we? Yeah, there's a Maya banner, but it's not a it's not a Destiny banner. Yeah. There will be a Maya Destiny further down the line, I believe. But, yeah, I mean, like, it's two SSR units that are much harder to get. So, like, just... Even just from, like, an unlocking Bonds perspective, Rosalia, much harder to get to full strength than Leon. So, mm -hmm. for a new player, I think I would still recommend Leon. Okay. And even for like even for like mid game players, you know, like because because Slepnir is one of the hardest ancient beckoning fights, I think, and you, I think you really really want to have Leon trained for that one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on Rosalia? She looks definitely After, interesting. Yeah, she's quite good. Between this and some of the later patches, they are trying to power up Lonely Faction a little bit. I mean, just uh, just the last two days, we've been uh, editing the site and adding some in, some of the newest stuff. Uh, you know, like Tensei Jessica and uh, Mario just got added. Or yep. they just got announced on the Chinese server, so uh, it's interesting because like Glory Faction is looking a lot better now. They still have a lot of problems, but you know they're they're looking pretty good. And if you are a Glory main, uh, I can't see myself not recommending Rosalia. She's pretty good. Yeah, I was definitely a Glory main before, but now. I'm... Yeah, I think Glory is like the first faction many people choose because like it's the easiest one to get into. because yeah. it provides so many free units for it. Yeah, but uh, I think that's all I have to say about Rosaya. Any anything finally want to add here from Tier? No, definitely interesting. Yeah, if if she was placed earlier, I might have picked her instead of Leon for a lot of stuff because I was a glory in the beginning. <laughs> but you know, like a year and a half later, you would have picked her for more reasons than just her as a game unit. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Maybe I won't say much. <laughs> okay uh well okay so next we got noemi so last time we talked about noemi we we really didn't say very much because i was thoroughly unimpressed with noemi when i first saw her so like noemi is uh Zalon said they want her to be the counterpart to lana so she's like the glory lana hmm. and you know just the last two days we got jessica tensei announced and you know in, some people are thinking jessica tensei is a super rip for noemi because in many ways she looks like just Noemi, but better. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, like, even despite that, I will say that I think Noemi is better than I gave her credit for when I first saw her. So I think she's actually pretty interesting. She's not amazing, but she is not bad. I think she can be pretty good. Uh, a couple things to note. First, uh, we have Noemi's talent, which has intelligence plus. So this is immediately a problem compared to Lana, because Lana has damage plus, which applies to soldiers, and yeah. intelligence plus does not apply to soldiers. So that's, that's a big problem. She also gives this uh, Magical Clothes buff, which says if a unit's HP is less than 80%, the next attack taken will be reduced by a certain amount of percentage. Uh, so this is actually pretty nice. So like people have been comparing this to the shield that Jessica Tensei has been announced to have. Yeah. I'm going to say there's a couple differences here. Jessica Tensei's shield only applies to herself and like one other person and it only works at 100% HP, so if someone breaks your 100% HP, it's basically immediately gone, and Jessica Tensei's shield only lasts one turn. This gets applied uh, you know, at the end of Noemi's first turn, and it lasts basically forever until it goes uh, until you use it up. The other thing is that uh, this is active only at below 80% HP. Uh, some people didn't like this because it means that if you're trying to tank something for 100% life, you know, this obviously wouldn't help you, but I think it does have its uses. I mean, if you're at 100% life, it means you have a number of bonuses from your soldiers and all that. And you also, if you have full moon enchant, it means you have the full moon defenses up as well. If you have a full moon enchant character, this is like a good safety net. So if someone like yeah. backstabs, if someone like backstab your full moon character and you lose full moon, this will reduce damage by 50%. Like huh. that's a lot. I think I think this shield is better than people give it credit for. And of course, Noemi applies it again when she dies, uh, so you can get it twice in a battle. The one thing I don't like about Noemi's kit is that she has nothing but single target strikes. 
which in this meta, like this, this current meta, we have we are very AoE heavy, and Noemi is not really helping with that at all. Yeah, because I was about to say her three buffs are, and she doesn't get her revive. Like, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's that's a big problem with Noemi is that she is a single target character, and even though like she she's a little bit like young Jessica in a way, in that she her three cost skill can increase her range. Uh, so she can shoot up to four spaces away, and if you get the new staff that we're going to get in, uh, in like just this week, I believe, uh, she will be able to shoot five spaces. So that is kind of nice. The other thing is that she has a handful of uh, spells that create terrain effects, but they're like really lame. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like the the ice spear creates like a move, movement down terrain, but it but it's only on the one block that you attacked on. And then you have pillar of fire, which is a little bit more useful. It, it creates a plus sign terrain that does fixed damage. You know, it's it's okay. And she also has accelerated aid, which is actually surprisingly useful. She's a pretty simple character who you can make work, but she's definitely not a must pull. She is a character you would slot in if you have a ton of glory characters and you want more. Or if she's your waifu. You know, if she's your waifu, then, you know, more power to you. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh yeah, one last thing I will add is that uh, she's actually pretty good in auto chess mode <laughs> from, from what I've played. Uh, you know, like, her, her, her fire terrain is actually kind of annoying in auto chess because, you know, the AI is dumb and they'll continuously walk into it. Huh, well, okay. So she does have that niche going for her. Uh, <laughs> one question about her. Yeah. Do any future characters have bond requirements that are required for or by her? Uh, I don't believe so. I can't okay. think of any right now. Yeah, because she wants Jessica and young Jessica, and I'm assuming. Yeah, you know, off the know. top of my head, I don't believe any of the reincarnation characters will require her. Uh, that's not to say she will never be required, but for, uh, Rosalia will be required for Mariel. Okay. So, if you're planning on making a reincarnation team, you could probably still consider skipping Noemi, but Rosalia is probably someone you want. Rosalia is really good. Uh, what, any items coming out? Exclusive gear? Uh, she did not get exclusive gear yet, no. Okay. And neither did, neither did Rosalia, so they have, uh, so it's gonna be a while before we see. I, I mean, I, I feel like Noemi is one of those characters that they should be getting a, an exclusive equipment sometime soon, because I think she is a character that needs some help, even though she's okay, but, you know, okay characters. Yeah. So I mean, she can get I mean. help. <laughs> Alright, let's get into awakening skills. Okay, this one, so last time we made a video on this topic, uh, S2 and I were kind of snarky about it. We were talking about Ultimuler's 3 cost skill, and then we just said, I just said, it sucks, and then we moved on. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so let, this time I'm gonna try to be a little bit more substantive. I'm gonna try to explain why Ultimuler's 3 cost is so bad. Uh, you know, like, I, I think if you're an experienced player, then you probably already know why Ultimate 3 cost is bad just looking at it. First, let's explain what it does. So, Ultimate 3 cost, it attacks a single enemy for 1.5 times damage, and then after he's done attacking, if there are two or more enemies within one ring of himself, then he will act again, but he cannot move or use move again effects, so he's stuck in the same place and he can attack again. And, uh, yeah. if, he, if he successfully defeats a target with the skill, see, uh, it gets cooldown minus 6, it has a cooldown of 6, so that means it's up immediately. Ah, I see, okay, so... And, uh, so, uh, that effect also has a 1 turn cooldown, so... In, in theory, what this is supposed to do is that you walk up to someone, you attack them with this skill, you kill them, uh, and then you immediately have this up in, you attack another unit with this skill again. Uh, you don't have to kill them this time, but, you know, you get to act again. So, you, you act 3 times in total with Ultimular. Hmm. So... So this has a number of effects for Ultimiller. Of course, that means he get, gets a bunch of stacks all at the same time of his talent. Uh, he might be able to take out three units in one turn, which is really, really powerful. But I mean, that's where the good news ends because that yeah. is that situation is never ever going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, okay, so let's let's consider first. Let's consider PvP. Okay, like in PvP, it's much harder to make things work. But you know, as you can imagine, if you fly in with this skill, you attack Landius. Even if you kill Landius, he revives. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was say that that alone. Uh, I was thinking like, oh, he could you know destroy tanks, but it's like yeah, the only person I can think of him doing that is like SR tanks or like a Leaden without his buff. And that's that's the other thing because Ultimiller has no like he doesn't have a lot of sustain in his kit. He has vampire bats, but if you want to be busting a tank, you should not be using vampire bats. Yep. So like. 
So the best this will be able to do is that you fly up to them and you attack twice in a row. Maybe you'll get a tank kill and like if your ultimate are super super stacked, maybe you'll kill a Landius if he's already injured. But yeah, this is like yeah, super like, this, is never, this is never going to work in PvP. Like, yeah. I, and if it's a juggler, like juggler is so physically tanky, like there's no way ultimate can break past them. Yeah. yeah. So that's for PvP. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't like the skill at all. Like, in fact, like I would say it is worse than Raging Thunder. Like, Raging Thunder has also 1.5 times damage, but it gives some damage reduction, which is really nice. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you know, and let's talk about PvE now. PvE, this is also terrible because for the exact same reason. When are enemies going to line up in a way so that you can get three kills with this thing? And if the enemies are so weak that you're getting three kills in a row with ultimate armor with this thing, it's like it's overkill. Like you don't you don't need. You yeah, don't need I was I was thinking like maybe like guild message. guild raids, but that's any any other skilled work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and like and think about like Eternal Temple, you know, like okay. You know, if I'm fighting like the Phoenix with Ultimate, it's like okay, yeah. I'll attack the Phoenix twice in a row. I guess. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea because uh, when you when you fight the Phoenix, you get like you get stacks of debuffs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing is like Slepnir. Uh, Slepnir, you attack him and it's like, well, I can't move out of the way now, so that was pointless because yep. you need to move out of the way when you're fighting Slepnir. <laughs> So yeah, I Weird I don't skill. know what they were thinking with this three cost skill. It is just, it's so so bad in yeah. every way. Like I don't, ah, God, <laughs> I, just, I get I, I just I can't even talk properly. It's so I mean like the one thing I the one thing they could do to fix it and just make it go from horrible to decent is let you move again. Like that one phrase alone, they can't move kills it. Yeah, like it, it kills you it. You know what? It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, if it was like, you can move, you can move, but you can only move two spaces. Like, if it was something like that, then like, oh, it would be actually be pretty interesting. But yeah, because then you could no, like, like, possibly, yeah. and then... Yeah, you can, you can punish, you can punish someone butching up too close together. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's, that's the main thing, but like, yeah, the way it is now, it's that's... like... Rip, Alton yeah. Miller is like my go-to guy for like, a majority of stuff. I mean, Alta Miller is still good for PvE, but it's like, this skill is a complete waste. I don't know it, what they were thinking with this skill. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, the, we've gotten, like, a lot of mediocre three-cost skills in the past, but this is the only one that I feel like they should go back and really just, like, completely fix. Like, this the is the thing only I'm one surprised I feel most is the fact that it gives him, like, no buffs. I mean, I guess the idea is that you attack multiple times so you get multiple stacks on him. I guess talent. so. That's, that's, that's the get, idea. Like, if you can okay, if you can essentially attack three times and he's already he's already at like halfway of his max stack. Yeah, so he's up to three stacks, which he can stack up to four times, so he's he's nearly full power at that point. So, but uh, helmet's five, but yeah. Uh, well, actually, the helmet does not let you stack up to five. This the helmet just lets you have the oh. duration extended by one turn. I never noticed that, huh? Yeah, it, it, it still only stacks up to four times, I believe, but the helm just makes it so that they last longer, so that you don't have to refresh Oh, you're right, yeah, sorry, that, yeah, and everything increases, like, um, strong arm and... Yeah, it's, whatever. yeah, it increases the, the, the length of strong arm, which is pretty OP. Like, that's, oh, that's yeah. That's actually really nice, but, like, Yes, yeah. especially if you use strong arm with, like, raging thunder, 10-50%. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, that's, that's, a uh, like, when you, when you use them to tank Slepnir and stuff, that's pretty common, yeah. Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna have to do. I, I, I still don't have like an A and stuff near. Rip. <laughs> Just gotta keep at it. <laughs> yeah. Also, Miller is a really good tank for Slepnir, but this this does not help him with that at all. You would never take this into Slepnir with him. Got it. Okay. Who else um, do we have to do? Because this guy is, uh, he needs some help. <laughs> he needs some milk. Okay. So the next three cost skill we have is Almeida. So I am one of the only Almeida meme players left on Global Surfer. So I will say, like, I'll say the same thing I said last time, which is I do not like this three cost skill at all. It does not synergize with how Almeida is played at all. So how what this three cost skill does is that it is essentially a self-target heal that is an AOE up to four range away. So it's a self-targeted four span heal. Uh, it heals for three times user's intelligence, which is the same as mass heal. Yeah. Uh, but instead of giving a dispel, it gives everybody a buff that says when they end their turn, two units within four blocks will get one random debuff. So basically, it gives a weaker version of Almeida's talent, uh, debuff talent, to everybody in range. <sighs> How do I, where do I start? So, okay, so having another heal on Almeida is actually kind of nice, but 
what really annoyed me about this skill is that it is not an attack. I really, really wish that this was an attack that also healed. Kind of like Jessica, uh, young Jessica's like AOE. Yeah. Or like, uh, or like uh, Licorice's three cost skill. Because Almeida is almost always run with clock. And this does not activate clock because it's a heal. Uh, oh, dang. It doesn't work with her Mist Dancers, which you might equip on her sometimes because it's not an attack. It doesn't work with clock. It doesn't work with Vidar's Rose, which a lot of people equip as Almeida's accessory. It doesn't work with her special weapon. That's that's the biggest thing here. Is like, it just, they it's weird. gave her us yeah they gave her a special weapon that encourages you to try to be a little bit more offensive with Almeida to make her like a mixed debuffer healer kind of character. But then they gave her a three cost like this, which is like it's a heal. <laughs> I wouldn't say this is useless, like, in certain situations, I do, like, have Almeida in a full healing kit, and you bring, like, Forest Priest and stuff on her, so you will have heal plus mass heal plus this 3-cost skill. It makes it helps her healing output a little bit, but the, the cooldown on this is five, 5 turns. It's it's basically another mass heal. I don't, like, they should understand how Almeida works, and they just, it's, it, I, I understand that, like, SR... 3 cost skills, they sometimes try to underpower because they're freebie units and they try to not make them too powerful. But yeah, I think like they really kind of screwed up here because they if this was an attack, if this was also an attack, I think it would have been fine. Like it wouldn't have been overpowered and it would have worked really well with how Alain is played. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and even in like PvE, okay, Almeida is good for like Phoenix. She's pretty good in Phoenix, but uh, dragons. You don't Yeah, and some dragons, but like in those it's like yeah, you usually want her to bring like ultimate quip or at least dragon blow to try yeah. to dispel buffs off the boss or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm I'm really disappointed by this three cost. Like I'm I'm gonna get it. And I'm probably gonna use it once in a while, but it, this is really disappointing to me. Okay. But let's end on a good note. Let's go to Togro Brothers. Togro Brothers. The rip, the one guy I didn't get. <laughs> this is actually a really, really good three cost skill. Uh, so when you first look at it, you might think this doesn't, this looks okay, which is what we said last time, because it's just, it does one times damage with plus 60% damage. So it's basically assault. It's assault without the heal block part of it. But it can also, uh, it can stun, which is kind of nice. It, all, it can also uh, get cooldown minus four if you kill something with it. So the reason why this is so good is because Togro was really missing damage plus in his kit. And this is well, this gives him that. That's that's really what needs to be said. And what happened on the Chinese server after this was introduced is that Togro became one of the prime juggler killers because uh, with with damage uh, with damage dealt increase uh, he has an easier time breaking through last rights, and because Togro has such has really really high attack, like he has the highest attack stat in the game, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> he'll just uh, you know he can uh, as demon class of course. You take a demon Togro, you use this three cost skill, and then you just ram into a juggler. You can like you can like one shot them. Wow, it's, it's pretty good. It does make Togro very one dimensional in a way, but like he was always kind of one dimensional. He was always like a hit things really hard character. Yep. I'm kind of sad I missed out. He was the only person I didn't get from the Yo-Yo Hogger show. I got everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people slapped on Togoro. They didn't want to get him because uh, everyone, everybody wants to play the heroes. Nobody wants nobody wants the villain. <laughs> also, everybody wanted Hein. And so people were going after Hein instead of him. Yeah. Hi, uh, hey, hey, hey. Hein, Hein. Hein. Everybody was trying to get Hein. He everybody was trying to get Hee Hee. <laughs> okay. So, and yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's it's... It's pretty good, uh, and uh, we'll probably see a couple Togros now. Like in in first band Landius boxes, you're going to see Togros. Nice. I don't know if this was a joke, but some people said that like they saw like Ledens and Emilios being used just to counter this. Oh because, my. <laughs> because they're holy tanks. And, yeah. You know, Togros run as a demon, so you know like or yeah. a, a demon a demon DPS is not gonna kill a holy tank. Okay, that's a good note. Yeah. So uh, huh, it's. Wow. Uh, it's a good three cost skill, but there's not a lot to say here. It's lots of damage. It's nice. It's <laughs> so finally we have uh, the two new <laughs> pieces of equipment. <laughs> we got one for Betty. We got one for Sophia. So let's start with Betty, because like when I was talking about this with S2, he said he he was excited to use this. <laughs> I don't know if he's still excited. I don't like this helm. It's really dumb. It it boosts the amount of fixed damage that Betty will deal based on how low her HP is. <laughs> 
So it's like, eh, okay, sure. Like, so basically the idea is that if someone AoEs you, you know, you lose some HP and it'll boost your damage a little bit. So your Betty's fixed damage will do more damage. Yeah. That's the basic idea. And uh, of course, we can we can immediately talk about it since we know about it now. Is Betty's three cost skill? We uh, we just learned about Betty's three cost skill. So Betty's three cost skill is like a sword dance with rupture built in, basically. Uh, so yeah, it, it works with this as well. It's nice, but uh, eh, it's still it's still like, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Betty's three cost skill a little bit more in depth when we get around to that uh, around next week. But yeah, like. To be fair, like the helm slot was probably the one that was the most open. Betty does not need Fury of Tear. Uh, Betty doesn't really use skill attacks that often, and she doesn't really rely on counter attacks all that often. So having this in her helm slot works. Yeah, okay. I don't got a lot to say here. Like it's it's it makes Betty it makes Betty better, sure, but like yeah, she's still Betty. <laughs> she's still Betty. Rip. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you got any thoughts here? I don't have her, but the likelihood of me getting her in the focus banner that's coming up like uh, in October uh, is high because of the 50-50 chance between that and Amelia. Yeah, uh, I am. I still don't have Amelia or Betty, so I am going to fall on that banner and hope yep. I get Amelia because yep. I want to play around with Amelia. But if I get Betty, I guess she can be nice as like an Empire Guild Wars tank or something. Yeah, <laughs> glory. <laughs> that's about it. Or Glory, yeah. I mean, but Glory has enough tanks already. They got, they got Grenier and they got yep. Corbara. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't got a lot to say here. If a Betty Wayne wants to tell us how wrong we are in the comments, please have at it. <laughs> the one uh, so next, person. <laughs> but so next, we got Sophia's armor, and this armor is amazing. It's like, amazing. This armor, is, this armor is so good. Like, I mean, good enough that Sophia was found in many, many boxes. Like, and I mean, part of that is because the mythical box is so popular now, and Sophia herself is a mythical character. Yep. I mean, I, I don't know what there is to say about this skill that isn't obvious just from looking at it. Uh, you know, it lets you run characters without a faction buff, uh, and then Sophia will just cast a spell on all of them, and you'll get you'll get all your buffs. I just realized it says it says allies. I thought it said allied. No, mass heal, boom, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and like. Uh, it, it is slightly weaker than a faction buff, but in most cases, that's not too important. Uh, you know, you get a little bit less attack, you get a bit less magic defense, but you do get the big defense that Sophia gives from her talent. So. Yeah, like you don't have to carry mass resist anymore. You can just have yeah. that. You can still bring mass resist if you want the immunities, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, get, it does give 30% magic defense instead of 20. Oh, and, and but yeah. mobility reduction, in fact. Okay, so yeah. 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 But it's still definitely nice. It... So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Sophia is really good now, like... I mean, you saw things like people bringing Landius without a faction buff, and then Sophia would just heal him. Uh, he gets all his, he gets all the attack and defense buffs he needs, and instead of bringing a faction buff, they bring like Route or something just to push enemy units or whatever. Oh yeah. Oh, I did uh, see that. Yeah. yeah, I saw that Route. Oh. Like you can Route like you know if someone is uh, foolish enough to try to jump in with their juggler into your into your Landius's face, yeah. you just Route them. <laughs> you push them out of the way. It's like, okay, you just waste your three costs. Rip. Sophia is going to find herself in lots of boxes, and she is going to be a mainstay for a while, I think. Nice, I'm glad. Yeah, and, and Rewind, of course, is still super, super powerful. Rewind. Yep, I'll definitely try to yeah. build her up more now. I had Sophia built a little bit for PvE, but I might consider runestoning her. Uh, yeah, when, same. You know, this actually, of course, this does not help her in, like, uh, Ancient Beckoning, because you cannot get attack or defense buffs in Ancient Beckoning, so <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Yeah, this for PVE. This is not like for a lot of PVE challenge fights. This is not as important. But yeah, like for PVP, this is pretty crazy. Like, it's really nice how much like Sophia like opens up your pick ban when you have her in your box. Just from, from just in, like from a pick ban perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So this time our update. I think it's a little bit. There's a little bit less going on this time. I think. Uh, you know, we we just had our Cold Steel collab, which was all the excitement we needed. Yep. This time we had just two new characters, bit of new equipment. The new three costs, and we got a fair arena going. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about this time, so this is going to be a shorter episode. But next time, we will be talking about the next big Chinese patch, and we will have a guest next time. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's all we got for you guys today. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.